night, that was the title of the message. It was records. Yes. And I want you to think about that. Like when you're at the end of your life, it's too late to think about That's what right. I really want to be known for. Even when it's the end of elementary school, like you guys can't go back. Right. and redo any of that time. And so there are things that went on record for you, your behavior, your grades, those things follow you into the next season. In a middle school year, you wanna press in right now, especially if you're at the beginning of it, as a sixth grader, if you're an eighth grader, you wanna really think about how you wanna press in all you can so that you move into high school correctly because you don't get a do-over, right? Yes. Now his mercies are new every morning, but we want to as much, as long as we're here, guys, playing games is fun and and having like laughs together and all that. But if we're not going to focus on the Bible and be young men and women of the word, we're kind of wasting our time. And so you got to just decide I'm going to press in and I'm going to be all that he has made me to be. And that may mean I need to make some changes, but I can make them. That may mean some friends need to get out of my life because every time I'm around them, it's like they bring me down and I'm not strong enough to bring them up. And so I'm going to stop hanging out with people who are like too lazy and too crazy to lazy and crazy. Yeah. Too lazy and crazy to pay attention in church or let me ask you this. Have any of you guys ever wanted like a redo on a test before? I know that's right. How about a redo like in maybe a conversation or interaction with somebody? Maybe you said something hurtful or you know, maybe you just didn't carry yourself. To, right. We've all faced that before. And, and that's what we're telling you. That's why we press in because yeah. we, we can't get a redo. Even if we want, you know, sometimes you get a redo on your test. But like when you have a conversation, if you say words that you shouldn't have said, well, that's out there. You can't take it back. That's why we press in. And that's why we're intentional about our life. So we want to encourage you guys. Yeah. Today. So we, we want to be aware of our record, things that have already transpired. Look. Yeah, and then making sure that we're aware moving forward. And really, uh, you can write this phrase down. And um, Stephen Covey made this statement. And um, he's got some great audiobooks because I know you guys are just dripping with, you know, desire yes. to read. Listen to an audiobook. Your mom comes into your room and she thinks you're playing a video game. And you're like, no, mom, I'm listening to Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teenagers. Hey, could someone oh. hand me my phone? Because that is an actual thing. And Trey, I'm going to pull it up Trey, for you because Trey, somebody Trey. in here. Trey, is Trey, a world changer Trey. and is going to listen to Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teenagers. Thank you. Okay. Um, stalling, stalling. Um, Trey, 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 Trey. I was Trey, thinking more Trey, of like. Trey. You the man. Thank you for getting that phone. Going to okay. the first point of Paul, the do you guys remember <laughs> Paul kept records, right? And just like we talk about those things. They're in the record books, right? Like it is written for all of eternity. There's no erasing it. What's done is done. Like Charity said, his mercies are new every morning. But, but when you do things, there are repercussions. Just like I said earlier, when you say something, if you hurt somebody's feelings, you can't take that back. Now, you can yes. believe God for them to recover and overcome. So but you funny. must make a decision from this day forward. Everything I do is going on record. So I want to be intentional with my conversations. I want to be intentional with my words. I want to be intentional with my actions. Okay, guys in the back, will y'all pull up an image? Just pull up an image for me. It is Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens. It's by Sean Covey. So it's by Stephen oh. Covey's son, I'm sure. S-E-A-N, Sean, C-O-V-E-Y. It is available on um, in iBooks. I didn't check Audible or any of the other ones. Yeah, audiobooks or iBooks. So the okay. digital reader. Or you could just listen to it. Um, and I, I really believe there are at least five people in here that will do that. Yeah. At least five. Boom. And it may, like, I may think it's people that you don't think it is. You don't That's know. Right. There's some people that you be, they'd be more serious than they'd be acting. You so. never know. Five. I think there's at least five of you. At least. Literally. Seven habits. They're going to throw a picture of it so y'all can get it exactly. Yeah. Seven habits of highly effective teens. teens. By Sean Covey. Mm -hmm. You're listening. Audible.com. All right. Paul kept records. Romans chapter yeah, 16. Yeah, let us know. Hit us when y'all have it. Just okay. hit it. Just hit it when you got it. Romans chapter 16. This is verse 1 through 6. New King James. I commend to you, Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the church in... Cincheria. I was going to say Crenshaw. Just I kidding. Know, I just make it up. I don't think I'm saying it. Right. In Crenshaw Boulevard, that you yeah. made. That's, that's where um, the Faith Dome is, right? Yeah. We went there. Dr. Fred Price. Dr. Fred Price. Thank you for Dr. Fred Price, Lord. Verse 2. That you may receive her in the Lord 
in a manner worthy of the saints and assist her in whatever business she has need of uh, you. For indeed, she has been a helper of many and also myself. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their own necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Greet my beloved Epanius, Epanius <laughs> who is the first fruits of Achaia. Aren't you glad your name's not Epanius? Epanius. Epanius. Me too. I'm going to give, I'm going to nickname somebody. I'm going to nickname one of y'all Epanius. <laughs> Verse six. Greet Mary who labored much for us. Okay. So Paul kept records, all of these people. And sometimes we just blow past all that kind of stuff right. when we're in our Bible reading. But ultimately right now as pastors, we could say, let's say we go on a really long trip. We go to Brazil and we're working Hallelujah. with Lana in her ministry for like five years. Whoa. Who am I going to say? Greet Who? Because they have been such a help to me, and I miss them while I'm here in Brazil. Greet Do you know what I'm paint, saying? Yes. Right? Who am I going to know in my absence is still crushing it? Right. Is still solid. Even when I'm not here, they're doing the exact thing that they were asked to do in the way they were asked to Ooh. do it. See, Paul is making note of all of these people. Y'all, Aquila and Priscilla were a married couple that literally stuck their neck out put it on the line for Paul because he was being so persecuted and he was already in prison. So we need to understand how important records actually are. Now the father keeps records. That's your next blank. Let's look at the evidence of that in scripture. The father also keeps records. Did they show the Sean Covey thing? Go ahead and show it. They got it oh, real yeah. quick. Okay, cool. Wow, it's fresh in their minds. I thought she gave me the thumbs up like you had it. There it is. Uh, yes, yeah, Sean Covey. Perfect. The yeah, seven and, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> the Seven Habits of Highly, Highly Effective, Effective Teens, teens by Sean Covey. Sean Covey. Okay, I literally just thought of this book when I came in here. I have not thought about this book in years, so I'm going to also order it for the bookstore because I literally just thought about it. I had a co conversation with Pastor Kathy not very long ago. She's like, there are no books for teenagers. No good books for teenagers. And I was like... Okay. Because they bought them all, Pastor <laughs> Kathy. They've, they've been reading no, them. No, but like we like to order, to buy, to oh, keep in there. To stock in yes, there. Yes. So I just remembered that one. So if Praise you. God, that was the um, Holy Spirit. Yeah. You can um, wait for it to come in or you can get it. On, I like to have it on both places. So it's, if it's in my phone at all Boom. times. You got it so with you. So there it is. Seven ha Habits of Highly there Effective Teens. I I really believe there's at least five. So if you do it, don't tell me you're going to do it and don't do it. I, you don't need to do that. I love you whether you don't do it or you do do it. But I know I'm, I have my faith out there for at least five. Okay, so fa let me know if you do. The Father keeps records, Matthew 10, 42. And whoever gives one of these little ones a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, surely I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. Raise your hand if you serve on one of our ministry teams. That's the equivalent, guys. Big round of applause for all of our junior bodybuilders. So you're not going to lose your reward. That's why you it's important that when we serve, we do it as unto the Lord cheerfully. You are rewarded for that in heaven. That goes on into eternity. Every time you get in a costume, every time you work in the cafe, everything that you do for him, it goes on. Do they get a reward if they do it with record. a bad attitude? Um, I, I, I think, honestly, it's probably like, like a, a lump of coal. It's a partial reward, yeah, probably. probably. Definitely do it with a good attitude then. Right, for sure. God's looking at our heart. So Second, when you're sweating in that costume, yes. sweat for Jesus. Sweat and just for say, Jesus. yes, Lord, for these children that have no idea. Imagine if that were instead blood because your whole guts Ooh. had been speared. Right. And you were on the cross. Right. And realize, I oh, don't really this have is it that easy. bad. I got it made. This isn't that bad. This is perfect. Could definitely be worse. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, 9 through 10. Therefore, we make it our aim. Everyone say aim. Aim. Who has good aim? No matter what the sports, you're good. You got I like good how aim. her hands shot up. Did you see that? That's my dream to have good aim. Because I can't remember the number of times my dad would say, You got to keep your eye. I'm like, That's what I was looking I at. I was doing that. I in my was house. doing that. Oh, yeah. And it still went way over here. Dude, like, you're so if awesome. you're playing darts or whatever. So it is our aim whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him. For we're all going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, Y'all, you don't want that to be the music when you step up. Do you know what I'm saying? You want this old school Ray Bolt song. Thank you for giving to the Lord. 
I am alive. That was changed. You want that song. Even though it's not your favorite song because you've never heard it before and you have no idea what I'm talking about. It's a cool song. Look it up. I, it's, he's kind of went through some challenges. It's fine. He's okay. had some ups and downs, but you know what? It's a good song The song anyway. is good. <laughs> um, you're going to stand before him at the end of your life, and you want to hear, like, thank you. That was a job well done. Yes. Good and faithful servant. Not like, okay, you kind of tried, and you kind of didn't do so good, right? Yes. We're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ so that we can receive the thing, reward for the things done in the body, whether good or bad, right? So God keeps records. We need to realize, um, you can fill in this last one, we should keep records. Right. Look at um, Romans 16, 17. It says, now I urge you, brethren, note those. Remember we said on Wednesday night that you can make note without being rude. Guys, you cannot go up to somebody and say, I can't be your friend anymore. My mom told me I can't hang out with you. Yeah. That is rude. My mom hates your guts. I can't hang out with you. That, you, you don't ever do that. Could y'all please understand that? Like, you don't ever do that. If somebody is not serving the Lord, because look, it says, note those who cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine you have learned, and avoid them. Guys, that doesn't mean you walk up to them and say, mm -hmm. hey, you're like not really being as good of a Christian as I'm being, right. so I'm not going to be able to hang out with you anymore. I'm not going to be able to sit by you. Mm -hmm. That is rude. Right. You don't do that. Right. You make a separation. You sit somewhere else. You reposition yourself. And then if something comes up and they note that and they see that, you say, you know what? Honestly, I'm really just wanting to press into God. I want to, to do my best and I haven't been doing my best. So I'm just endeavoring to like focus with my whole heart. Right. And then that gives them the opportunity to say, you know what? I need to do that too. Or you know what? I get it. And I respect you for that. And, and then you just keep on going the way that you need to. Right. So avoiding people or noting, does, there's a lot of people that if they text me or they want to hang out or not a lot of people, but, but I, there's just certain things I don't do. Right. And I'm not rude about it. I don't make it obvious. You know, have you ever heard the phrase like they'll get the hint? Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit. Well, Exactly. I'm thinking about this, like when you're in friendship with somebody, this doesn't mean if they make a mistake, you walk away from them forever, right? right? You should be um, comfortable enough in your friendships with each other to be, to be able to say, hey, I noticed what you said, you know, pull them aside and say, hey, I, I don't think you should have told that joke. You know what I mean? You don't go and tell all your other friends, like, I can't believe you said that. Let's totally bail on him. Yeah. No, you, you like, uh, iron sharpens iron. Yeah. We're supposed to make each other better. Now, if you have a friend and you've been uh, encouraging them, hey, let's not say those words. Let's not tell those jokes. Let's not listen to that music. And they're not getting it. Yeah. Then there comes a time where it's like, you're making note. Like, we're not going in the same direction. Yeah. The Bible says, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? We're, we're not in agreement then there's going to be a separation that begins. Yeah. But it's not like you walk away from your best friend. Does that make sense? And then also those that maybe you're not currently friends with, you're going to want to take note of their life, how they carry themselves, okay. what words they're using, because you're not going to want to allow yourself to come into proximity of relationship with them in that context. Now, you may endeavor to minister to them. You, hey, has anybody ever told you that God loves you? Has anybody ever told you that Jesus died on the cross for your sin? Do you know for sure where you're going to spend eternity? You know, those kinds of things, of course. But for being best friends and, hey, come over to my house and spend the night and hanging out with them and becoming their bestie when they don't have a track record of honoring God. No, you're going to make note of that. You're going to avoid those, yeah. right? You're, you're not going to enter into friendship with them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, and I think too, it's really important that we recognize that like, obviously we're all growing and just because a friendship changes, it doesn't always have to be ugly. True. Okay. I know from experience, sometimes it is, and you cannot avoid it. You did everything the way that you knew to do it. You were kind, you were honest, you were sincere, you weren't judgmental, and it still ended ugly. It doesn't have to end ugly. You have a hair. Hang on. I'm like, jacket. Maya, keep raising my hand. Okay, I, I've literally seen this play out recently. Like um, some some young people, they're living their life, they're serving God, and it's like they're doing what they know to do. They're walking in the light. The Bible says, "What fellowship has light with darkness? There is no fellowship." Yeah. And so when they're walking in the light and doing what they know to do, and all of a sudden this other person is like, kind of slowly drifting away. Like you stay in your lane. You keep yeah. being you. You keep being the same. You keep doing what you know to do. And over a period of time, and sometimes it's fast. Like wow, I thought home dude was light, but it's like it seems like he's darkness. 
You know what I'm saying? So you keep doing what you do, and then they'll determine how close they are or aren't to you based on their decisions, right? You're staying in church. You're staying in the Word. You're living holy. You're living righteous, and their life decisions. Now, you're going to want to make note, like the Word says, but it's, it's about staying in your lane and not changing. I don't change for this person. I don't act one way at church and one way at school and one way at the house. No, I'm the same person everywhere I go, right? And then people will either say, you know what? I feel challenged by you to be better. I'm going to put forth ever. I'm going to make changes. I'm going to stop listening to that music. I'm going to stop watching those movies. They'll either get better or they'll separate themselves from you. Yeah, and I, I want you to be encouraged that, like, you know, as your pastor's a little bit older than than you, like, we understand the pull of just things. Just barely older. Yeah, just barely. We understand the pull of things in the world on your flesh because things pull on our flesh too. So so don't think that we're not aware that sometimes there's certain music that's just cool. It's got good vibes. It just like hits really good. And then you listen to some Christian music and it maybe doesn't. Y'all, we understand that. I like the cheesy okay, music. We, we weren't born in the stone ages. Do you know what I'm saying? But we just know that at the end of the day, it's not worth it, and we have to decide. If it wrecks my soul or it moves my soul so in a different pursuit, it's not worth it. And so all of these things don't have to be, they're, they're serious business, but you don't want to be seriously rude to people because you want to be seriously committed to God. You just want to communicate and do it in love. Now, this next um, point, when we're talking about being on record, this is your official or public statement, meaning people have a perception of you. People have an opinion about you. They can't see your heart. How many times have, have you heard somebody, you know, maybe they made a mistake and they're like, well, you know my heart. That's irrelevant. Your heart and your attitude are in two totally different places right now. So I want you to think about this verse. In Matthew chapter 17, it says, and I'm going to read verse um, 20. Matthew 7, 20 says, Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. A tree that doesn't have fruit on it, you may not know if it's going to have apples, if it's going to have oranges, if it's going to have limes, if it's going to have peaches. You don't know until the fruit's on it. What does that mean? Everything that people can see about you is your fruit. Now, I want you to write down, and, and if there, if you have more than three, that's fine. Just stop at three. Write down three things in your life that like point people to Jesus. Like, like I have a good attitude. I'm obedient. I'm respectful. Like, give me some good fruit. Think about a couple. You need to know that. Sometimes we're only aware of our faults. Right. But what is some good fruit in your life? Let's focus on the positive. I'm kind. I'm friendly. You know, that's important. It's important to be friendly. That's a biblical thing. What are some things that, some good fruit that you got going right now? We'll deal with your attitude, your rebellion, talking while the teacher's talking another time. <gasps> You're cute though. Not really. Not really. <laughs> Maybe you're disciplined. Maybe you're a strong leader. Maybe you know how to encourage others. That's a good one. Maybe you're you're helpful with older people, elderly people. Sure. Not me. Don't call me older elderly. Please, in Jesus' name. Or you find a new church. Just kidding, you won't. I'll forgive you. You can still come here if you think I'm old, but I'm not gonna tell you my age, especially this group. Okay, you guys got some? Okay, somebody share, be confident, and just say, I'm good at this, please. Okay, Amaris? Strong leader, very good. Yes, baby. Helpful. Oh, I like that one so much. Okay, somebody else, come on. Marco, what'd you write down? Mm. Just tell me. What? Helpful? You are helpful, but another one is thoughtful. Um, last year, Innkeeper's Daughter, I was standing in the line with Marco, and I wanted to buy him a drink, and he ended up buying me a drink at the cafe. Do you remember that? Very thoughtful. Very, very thoughtful. Maya? You're a good encourager. That's really good. Jackson? Discipline. Mm, firstborn. Shout out. Shout out to the firstborns. woo -hoo! Jackson. And if you Jackson, didn't get those jeans, if you didn't get those you. jeans and you're firstborn and you're not disciplined, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Something happened, but it's all good. God loves you and he's still got a plan for you. Got some over here. Okay, tell me. Amberly? 
friendly. Friendly. You are friendly, Amberly. Anybody else? If you're the middle children, you are amazing. Go, you're, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Cadence? Honest. Okay. Great. That's like yes. my favorite. I know. That's such a good one. She had already said one, so I was going to give someone who hadn't said one. All right, go. Cadence? Yes. We don't have... Yes, a good communicator. Yeah. That's good, true. Good, good. Millie, was Millie it? for days. Millie for life. What? Yes. Friendly. Millie's also a leader too. Selena. Birthday. It is awesome. your birthday, and we love you. Yeah. Let's give Selena a big round of applause. We love you, Selena. You're gonna have the best year you've ever had. Okay. Guys, every once in a while, and I know you're growing, and sometimes it's like people are always focusing on your weaknesses, but right. that's because they're in your life to train you in the privacy of your... Okay, hold on. Y'all didn't say anything over here. Second row saints over All right, here. Bring Caleb. Them on. Bring them on, men. Come again. Can y'all be quiet? <sighs> Third time's a charm. Thoughtful. Very thoughtful. Yes, you are, Caleb. Respectful. I like that. Yes. Can we give that Woo! one a round of applause? Honestly. Seriously. Like, if you look up respectful in the dictionary, boom, his boom. face. And his picture. Okay, anyone else awesome over hair. here? And Do you want to cool say sweatshirt. one, Ethan? I want you to say one. You are kind. Kind. I like that. Okay, guys, sometimes you have to do, you do have to focus on your strengths. True. Otherwise, you're like, oh, I suck at everything. My, everyone's always worst. mad at me. I'm never going to be good enough. No, you, you suck at a lot of things, but there's a couple things that you're good at, and so we're going to focus gonna on find, those. We're going to find something that you're good at. I mean, seriously, you're in sixth grade. Like, come on. You don't have it all together right. yet, okay? Yeah, you're in process. So you're going to focus on the things that you do have, and that's good. Yeah, and, and like focus on the things that we're talking talking about focus on <laughs> not crafts okay <laughs> okay all right number two off the record this is confidential guys who you really are is who you are behind closed Whoop. doors powerful so don't live a double life don't be a double agent that's always the worst when you're watching a movie long time ago when we used to go to the movies boom remember that right? in the movie theaters <laughs> <laughs> Your feet would stick to the floor. <laughs> I, I, miss, I miss those sticky floors. That's right. Butter everywhere. Floors. It's fine. Kinda Popcorn. Kind of miss that butter everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Flat, Guys, it's always the coat. worst when you're like invested and you think they're a good guy and then it's like, bam, they flip um, and they're bad oh. guys. Right? That is the worst. It's so unsettling. Well, the same is true for your life. When you come to church and you're playing the good girl, good guy part, and then Ooh. bam, you go home Boom. and you have attitude with your parents. Double agent. You know, I've had parents to come up to me and say, my kids, like, they would never treat you the way that they treat me. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, that's not my fault. I didn't know. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, but you don't want to be a double agent. You don't right. want to have something else going on behind closed doors than, than who you really are. Because Luke 8, 17, we use this verse all the For time. For nothing is yes. secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to the light. So what are you doing privately? What are you doing privately? Be the same. Guys, you might even need to like just tell yourself, okay, Holy Spirit, help me to, to pick, to pinpoint one thing that I'm doing behind closed doors that if everybody knew I was doing, because I told you on Wednesday night, like we endeavor to live our life as though you are always with us. Not like we come in here and we're like, okay, now I'm a youth pastor. Praise the Lord. Look at us go. Do you know what I mean? Like you're with us all the time. Otherwise... We carry our call. We carry our responsibility. Otherwise, behind closed doors, we justify small compromises that end up, we have people that are in ministry, people that have been close to us, people that we've just watched at a distance, that it just starts with small things. And then they almost kind of egg each other on. Guys, there's ministers that smoke weed before they preach. There's ministers that drink wine after they preach. They're like, they have this whole thing where it's different and, and it only takes, when you open the door to the devil, it's like he busts down the door. Do you know what I mean? You give him an inch, he takes a whole mile. So, number three, for the record, so that the true facts are revealed or known. This is probably my favorite point because you can change. Like, you have the power to change and do things differently than you are right now. Right? You can take responsibility. The best way to separate yourself from who you used to be is to pray, ask God to forgive you, 
repent to the people that are involved and then tell somebody. Tell somebody, you know what? I used to be trash. I used to have the worst attitude ever. I don't do that anymore. And they were like, well, it's like yesterday. You know, that's all right. That was yesterday. Today is a new day. You start putting distance between you and that behavior. Because if you hide your past, even if it was five minutes ago, if you hide your past, then the enemy will shame you for your past. So you just get out there, especially when you're connecting with other people. They're struggling. You know what? I've struggled with this and I've struggled with that. That's how we sharpen each other where we're real and we're honest and we're like, "Mm, mm, mm, no, I've never been like that. Yes, you have. Maybe not like that, but in another way. You know what I mean? Um, That's one of the best ways to move forward because in 2 Peter 1.10, Um, It says, be even more diligent to make your call and your election sure. What does it mean to be diligent? Who can tell me a quick middle school definition of diligent? Jackson. Yeah, being responsible. What else? What's another? Yeah. Thorough. Mm -hmm. Really good. Yes. Consistent. Awesome. Yeah. We're to do that with our own call. Like it's not, it's not like, well, if God called me to be, I'll just, it'll all work out. No, it will not. We went, to, we went to Bible school with people who knew they were called to be pastors, knew they were called to be missionaries. It did not all work out. You know why? Because they weren't diligent. They weren't responsible. They weren't consistent. They weren't thorough. So your behavior matters. Okay, but answer this one first. What do you want to be known for? Guys, in every season, you want to ask yourself, I want to be a middle schooler that's known for being on fire for God. Let's just start there. So what does it look like to be on fire for God? Because I'm gonna make that my number one priority. If I will make that my number one priority, everything else will probably fall into place, right? Your behavior matters. Did everybody get that? What do you want to be known for? Your behavior matters. I think sometimes we think that if we're nice and we apologize or if we're funny, then it's okay. We can act however we want. It'll all be fine. No, you're creating habits for yourself. So you don't want to let yourself do the wrong thing. You want to challenge yourself. Put your flesh under, whether it's a lazy flesh, it's a bad attitude flesh, it's a jealous flesh, it's an insecure flesh. Put it in its cage so it can't come out. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Press into God so you can be everything he made you to be. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 11, even a child is known by his deeds, whether what he does is pure and right. You are your behavior, right? And you can't separate your behavior from who you are. Some people yeah. would say, well, that's not me. It's, you know, <laughs> Brother John George says, hey, <laughs> the label doesn't match the fruit. <laughs> like if you went to the store and it said oranges, but it was filled with curved yellow Bananas. Bananas. <laughs> bananas. Bananas. That's like gangster for bananas. <laughs> so it says oranges, but it's filled with bananas. <laughs> it doesn't match, right? So look at that. You are your behavior, right? Just like, hey, the label doesn't match the fruit. It doesn't work well, that I way. I don't even know. He, when he talks on the phone to Pastor John, I don't even know how he can be serious because, like, I would be laughing the whole time just because. Just because I love him. He like, talks that way on the phone, too. Like, you know. Hey, Brother John, I don't talk to, I don't talk to him that way because he's already talking that way. That would be weird. <laughs> <laughs> it would be like we we're twin brothers separated at birth talking to each other. So do you guys get that? You can't say, well, that's not me. That's, that, that's not my heart. Well, it may not be your heart. But that's your fruit. And your fruit is your heart, so it is your heart. Does that make sense? That's why it's important that we understand if we want to uh, make a change, it has to start with our conduct. It has to start, you know, it's on you. It's on me. We have to make the change. That's why we have It's kind of like whenever, and I I don't know why I just thought this is kind of funny, like when you fart and you're like, who's that? Like, my dog does that. Like she, she looks like she'll who, be like laying she looks like, down. Who is that? And I'm like, girl, that's you, bro. You. That's like that's you. you, and it smells. But like she'll be sound asleep and she'll fart and it'll be loud or it'll start smelling and she'll like look up and I'm like, yeah, that's your butt, girl. Like no one else is doing that. That's you. And She's so, like, no, it's what you've been feeding me. It's what you've been feeding me. But you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we do that. We're like, we act, we pop all way and then we're like, well, it's because my mom is good. No, no, it was you. That was all you. And you can repent and you can own it and say, you know what? I'm not doing that anymore. Because Pastor Bill Shear, which I stole this from him, how you do one thing is how you do everything. 
Guys, if I'm ratchet and unorganized behind the scenes, that's gonna affect the way that I lead you. If I'm not disciplined and I give my flesh whatever I want behind closed doors, that's gonna affect the way that I lead you. And you're like, ooh, good for you. Glad you're a leader, super. No, you are called to be a leader. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. It may be different than mine, but it still requires the same diligence. So how you do one thing is how you do everything. Uh, let's back up, make sure you've got them. You are your behavior. You are your behavior and you can't separate them. Is everyone good? Does everyone have their blanks? I'm, okay, we're kind of like, woo, today. So I don't, want to, I don't want you guys to leave here without your tool. Okay, hold on. I think there might be one more blank. Is there one more blank, Matt? There's three more? Hey, look at Papa Pony. Look at her pajamas, y'all. Is she cute? Okay. What blanks are y'all missing? The rest of them, we haven't got to them yet. <laughs> oh, I, th I thought you meant over what you just no, went over. No, no. All right, let's keep going. How you do one thing is how you do everything. Okay, you got it. So really, your record can be summed up in three things. Your words. If you weren't here on Wednesday night, we want to give you a report card that will kind of let you self-evaluate. And I got the honor of evaluating and making a comment for a young person this past week. Your actions. Your words, your actions, and your presence. Guys, I want to hone in on presence. We talk a lot about words. We talk a lot about behavior. But our, our presence is kind of like your whole vibe. Some of you, like, and, and you know, it's kind of like it's a t-shirt, like good vibes only, no bad vibes, whatever. I want you to think about your vibes, like, especially because we love teenagers. And like, when you're like slouching or like you're like, in my mind, I'm not like, oh, they're so disrespectful. They're so ratchet. I'm like, they stayed up late. You know, they're sleepy. You're so if you kind. look mad, I'm like, they're constipated. They got to go boo-boo. <laughs> like, that's, there's just some things going on. They had too much cheese. Exactly. And they are backed up. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, because we love you and we we are like called to your age. Yes, we are. But like other adults, y'all, they're not thinking like that. And I've talked to adults over the years and like about a certain teenager, and they're like, oh, they are horrible. They never smile. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, oh my God, they smile all the time. But like then I'm like, well, maybe they only smile to me. Do you know what I mean? Like your presence, even though you're young, guys, that doesn't mean that you can be ratchet. Like you need to get up in enough time that you put a little bit of water on your face and brush your teeth and brush your hair. Okay? You don't have to be, bye, Pastor Greg. I love you. It's a letter. You, do you know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to be like flawless and all that, but like sit up. Bring your Bible, have your stuff. Like don't have to be told 14 times it's time to get up in the morning. Do you know what I mean? And when you get here, even when you're tired, when people address you, look them in the eye, smile, go up to them, initiate. Don't wait for somebody to come and say hello. If Pastor Dean or Pastor Kathy or another adult leader walks by you, greet them say hello good morning right that's your whole vibe that's your whole presence it's it's kind of manner it's like where manners meet attitude and it really is respect but guys you're not always going to feel it you're not always going to feel like being mannerly you're not always going to feel like talking to adults I've been you know in conversation with they're weird like adults are weird like they're weird I don't know what they say and my mom's friend she's all weird okay stop saying everybody's weird okay everybody isn't weird okay they act weird Okay, they do. I get it. And they don't know what to say to you. They don't know how to talk to teenagers. Their struggle is really real. I get it. Okay. But you don't have to be weird just because they're acting weird. Do you know what I'm saying? You can be normal. Help them through this conversation that's awkward. You know, they don't know what to talk to you about. Especially if you see family members, you know, this coming week. But be helpful. Take initiative. If you don't have to cook, help clean. Help set the table. Right? Be aware. Have a positive attitude. Make it fun for your little cousins or whoever. Don't be like, oh, I hate them. You know, you like, you just got to the house. It's like 10 minutes in and you're already like mad at everybody. Like all your cousins. I Like the little things, guys. Don't put the things, what are the air bods? I always call them weird. They're called air pods and I call them air bods. It's like my own thing that I do. Okay, like you put those in and you're like out on the whole world. And then, and your parents are like, they're so sad. 
they love you, but it's like, I don't know how to talk to them. Like they're just checked out of the world. Like, are they mad at me? And it's like, no, they're mad at everybody. Like maybe you, but like, they're just mad at you. Take the things out when you're with other people. Okay, be friendly, be nice. If you don't want them to ask you weird questions, start asking them questions. Hey, how do you like your job right now, Uncle Juan or whatever? Do you know what I'm saying? Just ask questions, like be friendly. Okay, be friendly. You may bomb, like you may totally crash and burn. Like when I'm with my my in-laws, like I was at Thanksgiving, my sister-in-law had just gotten married. So I'm talking to her new husband, like I don't know him. Like these other two, I've been knowing them. You know what I mean? Brian, his older brother and Rachel, I've been knowing them for a long time. So it's like, yeah, you know, love them. Okay, you're the new guy. Okay, so I'm like, so he's from Norway. So I'm like, so what do you guys do for Thanksgiving in Norway? And he kind of paused. And I'm like, you know, like long pause, no answer. And I'm like, nobody else is saying anything. And so I was like, just being friendly. And he was like, well, actually Thanksgiving is, is an American holiday. And I was like, uh. I had thought about like, of course it is. Like we celebrate like the pilgrims, like nobody else celebrates Thanksgiving. Like that's an American holiday. Abraham Lincoln initiated Thanksgiving. Okay. In Norway, they do celebrate Christmas. That's kind of an international one. But Thanksgiving is like the 4th of July, America's independence. And they're not. And so I was like, I totally crashed and burned. Like I'm trying to meet the new guy and I'm asking him, what do you eat in Norway for Thanksgiving? And it's like, Come on, idiot. They don't celebrate Thanksgiving. It's fine, though. It's fine. Because uh, here's the thing. I'm either going to sit here awkwardly or I'm going to be nice and be kind and be friendly and put my earbuds in. Like, don't do that. You're just like, I don't want to be here. You know what I mean? Don't be that way. Want to be there. Okay? And y'all, if you were in Jumpstart or if you weren't, y'all should listen to Jumpstart because I'm telling you, I don't care what y'all got going on in y'all's family. We had some major cray crazy in ours. Like, nobody had their teeth. Everybody was old. Like... So I can get it, like I get it, but you just have to choose. And of course, me and Pastor Faith, like we're gonna have fun anyways. Like we're gonna, that's, that just needs to be your attitude. Like I'm gonna have fun, I'm gonna enjoy my life because I have Jesus. You know, if people are weird and people are wrong and they're disrespectful and they, you know, whatever, mask up or they're scared or whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna still keep my presence the way that it's supposed to be. So. A couple more verses, Psalms 19, 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Is that your desire? Because it should be. God, I want to please you with my words, with my actions, and with my presence. I want to be helpful. I want to be positive. I want to have good vibes, okay? Some of you, like y'all crush this, like y'all really have good vibes. And I got to be honest with you, the boys are a little bit more consistent than the girls. And I don't mean to be ugly, but they just are like, they're consistent. Like you walk up to them, you walk up and you say, you know, what's up to Caleb? He's not gonna be like, I'm pissed. I'm mad at her. I've never had that. He's pretty much, he's gonna smile. Hi, Pastor Charity. Hi, Pastor Charity. How are you, Pastor Charity? Where girls, it's like, I ain't even asking her about her day. Like she looks rad, she's mad. I don't know who she's mad at, but I don't wanna be on the list. Do you know what I'm saying? Like some of them are lit. Marco's the same way. When I walk in the room, or when he's around, oh, hi, Pastor Charity. Very consistent, very solid. Some of you girls, I haven't seen y'all in days, like weeks, months. Haven't had a look in your eyeball conversation, right? Your presence just all funky. Don't be that way. Just decide I don't wanna be funky. Even when I feel funky, I'm not gonna act funky. And that doesn't mean you always have to come up and talk to me, you understand? But just know that if we're keeping score like Kids Church right now, the boys are winning, okay? And I don't say that with joy, because I'm a girl. I just say that with the fact that we need to get our stuff together, girls. We need to be solid, young women of God. Okay, read Proverbs 31. Get your stuff together, okay? Colossians 3, 17 says, in all we do, we do it for the glory of God. So this is your life. Are you who you wanna be? That's literal lyrics to a song called This Is Your Life from Switchfoot. Look it up while you're reading Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens. I love you. Bye.